This morning we're gonna have some breakfast outside. We have two special guests and today we're gonna to go out there and restore my hot tub. It's uh, I think about 10 years old. I've had it for the last five I think and uh, I put this wood on there that's falling off. It's starting to rust. It just needs a cosmetic refresh so that it looks better and it works better. So today I figured with the help of Alex uh, I'm gonna do the full refresh. Before I get started, gotta go for a swim. <laughs> I about ripped my pants off. Who's in the shade there? Strollman. It's a hot day today. <laughs> gotta be uh, 100 degrees maybe, something like that. It's movie hot. Yeah. Ooh, I'll get in the shade too. Yeah, there you go. Much better. Alex is uh, staying in a camper in my yard because he's rented out the nook. And so I'm going to wrestle him into helping me in the hot tub. Are you good at construction? Yeah, I was born for that. You know, I'm so <laughs> useless with, with the hand tools and power tools. And... Uh, he's gonna learn. We're gonna do it together. The hot tub has three main issues. The first issue is the wood cladding. I built it from reusing a pallet and the wood is still good, but it needs restaining. I also secured it using this rope that always stretches and glue that didn't stick. The second issue is the lid. I never really built one. I just used these foam core folding closet doors that I found. And as you can imagine, they look awful and they work even worse. The third issue I have with the tub is that it's starting to rust. So all that means that when you fill it with water and heat it up, it just turns into a rust pool. So hopefully we'll take care of all three of these issues and we'll have an almost new wood fired hot tub. The first step was to remove all of the wood. I chose a gray semi-transparent stain because it gave me a clean look, but I didn't want it to look perfectly brand new. Alex spent about an hour staining each board with a sponge. Next, I sanded the bottom of the hot tub with 150 grit sandpaper to remove all the rust and make a grippy surface for the new paint to stick. I was kind of not going to sand underneath the stove, but I think that's a bad idea. Half-assed job. So now I'm going to remove the wood stove portion. I think it's just three nuts and then get her out of here. Then we can sand that down and the whole bottom to look good. The wood stove portion of my hot tub was built by my uncle out of a half of a propane tank. What's different about it versus a normal wood stove is that the lid and the chimney are both on the top. That way, no water gets in. With the sanding of the tub complete, I washed it out and let it dry. Then it was time to sand down the actual wood stove itself. It was super rusty, and I think this is where most of our rusty water problems are from. As I was sanding, uh, Alex found a problem. I've just hit the bottom of the can, and it's all full of sludge that's making this like paint, not like a white one. Yeah, it's looking. We have continuity issues. Look. Yeah, it's looking. <laughs> Stands out. <a> Very bit. thick. <laughs> 
No worries, I just decided to space out the off-color pieces on the back of the hot tub where nobody will hardly ever see them, so works fine. I wiped down the firebox with mineral oil to remove the sanding dust. This helps the paint stick and make sure that it won't flake off when things get hot. In a few minutes, the mineral oil was dry and it was time for our first coat of paint. While we waited for the new paint on the stove to dry, I opened up the paint for the bottom of the tub. I went with this aluminum color Rust-Oleum paint. It's an oil paint that's super tough and it's really cheap. And so far, it's actually held up really good. Ooh, slice some inch eggs. That's why you get French people to help you do things. And check breaks. Need a break? The paint rolled on fast and Alex touched up the details with a small paintbrush. After we finished painting the tub, Alex put on a second coat of paint on the firebox. It's now been a couple of days since we last worked on this. Um, the paint is finished inside, the paint on the stove is finished, and the paint on the wood on the outside is finished. I gave the stain a couple days to dry and then reassembled the boards with the old rope. I've got it on there with the rope that I had on there before, but I don't want to use that rope because it stretches. Every time the sun and the rain or whatever happens, happens, it just stretches and then they fall down how they're sitting now. So that's just holding them up there. And the way I'm gonna attach them is with uh, cable. I think that'll work better. Bad news. Uh, I thought I used pi, you know, 3.14 or whatever it is, to figure out the length of the cables. But I'm not really good at math, so they're way too short. I thought this was five feet across, which 3.14 would get us like 16 feet. Uh, right? I don't know. Either way, they're like two feet too short. Securing the cables is a real pain in the butt. But with Alex's help, we were able to pull them really tight and they secure the boards way better than the old rope ever could. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. After that, we installed the firebox and it was time to build the lift. I wanted a lid for the tub to have a raw look and not be too heavy. So a piece of 3 8 inch plywood was all I needed to do that entire span. And all I had to do was cut the curve of it with my jigsaw. After cutting the radius, I sanded the edges smooth and some markings that were on there. And then off camera, I sealed it with some polyurethane. It was finally the day to try out the rebuilt hot tub. It takes about one hour for the tub to fill all the way to the top, and then about another three hours for the fire to heat it to 110 degrees, which is my favorite temperature. I know most people think that's too hot, but for me, that's perfect. But before everything was 100% ready, there was one more modification I wanted to make. After the lid had sat on the tub for a few days, it started to sag in the middle, so I decided to add a brace on the bottom out of one by four. This also gave me a place to anchor the new handles that I wanted to install. With the handles in place, 
The hot tub rebuild was complete. Now we just gotta wait for it to heat up. If you made it this far, then thanks for watching this video. You can subscribe if you want, and if you have any questions, I'll be answering in the comments below for the next few weeks. Uh, so yeah, shoot me a question there, and thanks again for watching.